name of Wendy's signature frozen dairy dessert, Frosty, the, or snowman. Now, if you want large fries at Wendy's, do you still have to ask for Biggie fries? That's why I haven't been there in a while. I mean, I don't like sounding like I'm five years old when I just want more fries. I mean, come on, it's kind of crazy. Now, personally, I would have arranged the choices so it read Snowman, the Frosty. All right, no need to be cute. We got money on the line here, and Frosty is the correct answer. Tasty. Yep. When they first came out, they were only 35 cents, and they cost way more now. All right, so, ooh! 24,583 players are one for one after knowing what a Frosty is. And things are starting to heat up, aren't they? Yes. Let's get into question number two. According to the folktale, a genie appears when Aladdin rubs his magic what? Coffee mug, soup bowl, or lamp? Now, you know, Will Smith just said that he based his take on the genie character on his Fresh Prince persona. <gasps> That's so cool. I mean, look, as long as he gets one good uh, uh, in the movie, I, I will be happy. I will be so happy. All right, now, while I'd love to see Will Smith hanging out in a soup bowl with little bits of dried tomato soup still in it, Aladdin rubs a magic lamp. Lamp is the correct answer, everyone. Come on. I think you knew that one, right? Right? All right, where are we at? Oh, 24,120 players are two for two and still wishing for a piece of 10 grand. And next up, we've got question number three. The title character of TV's era would be most likely to excel at which Olympic sport? Archery, curling, or javelin? Now, I love superheroes, but they create so many that there have been a few misses like Arm Fall Off Boy from the Legion of Superheroes. Seriously, this is real. He could detach his arms and use them as blunt weapons. Not both at the same time, of course. I mean, you need one arm to, you know, swing the other arm, right? <laughs> so, even if you don't watch Arrow, a basic knowledge of Olympic sports will help you with this one. Two of these sports use things that are weapons, an arrow and a spear. The other one uses a broom, which seems more like a chore than an actual sport. And Arrow uses arrows, which are used in the sport of archery. Archery is the correct answer, everyone. And uh, hey, announcer guy, maybe you could become a superhero if you want to do something else. You know, you got the voice for it. Nice try, J.D. Witherspoon. But my alter ego would have the same voice and would give away my true identity. Also, I have no superpower. I've lived with this voice for 45 years. You don't think I've run through every option? Welcome to the party, champ! Wow. <laughs> Even your sarcasm sounds upbeat. Okay, well, we have 23,059 players who have hit everything they've aimed for so far. So what's next? We have a video for you. Back, relax, and take a look. Just look at those breathtaking homes. With California skyrocketing housing prices, licensing this clip is as close as I'll get to owning my own home. Okay, let's not bring everyone down. <laughs> so here's why we just watched that with question number four. Located on San Francisco's postcard row, what name do these famous Victorian style houses go by? The Breakers, the Painted Ladies, or the Seven Gables? Now, I know these houses make you think about Full House, right, right? But did anybody see the Fuller House slash Game of Thrones crossover on Kimmel the other night? I mean, I've always thought Jamie Lannister and Uncle Joey existed in the same cinematic universe, but that episode proved it, it proved it. Okay, now this famous row of Victorian houses built by architect Matthew Cavanaugh is sometimes known as the Seven Sisters, but not the Seven Gables, so that's incorrect. In Rhode Island, you'll find the incredible Vanderbilt Mansion, which is referred to as the Breakers, which means the Painted Ladies is the correct answer, everyone. There you go. <laughs> hey, whoa, we're down to 15,335 players who have knocked down the first four. And uh, hey, Loop, uh, wanna hit us with a quick plug? Sure thing. On Monday, there's a special Memorial Day game of confetti. Because it's on May 27th, we're giving away $27,000. And Tuesday through Friday, we have shows about superhero movies, 
horror movies, animated movies, and romantic comedies. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the plug, Loop. Loving it. All right, let's move on to question number five. Meaning the way of the foot and fist. The fist. The martial arts taekwondo was founded in what country? Korea, Vietnam, or United States? Now, you know, I've been thinking about taking up capoeira. Yeah, also known as dance fighting. <laughs> in fact, I've been putting out feelers at work if anyone's interested in starting up a dance fight club. I mean, we put in a lot of hours here, and I think it would help us all clear the air, right? Right. Yeah, okay. Now look, the word Taekwondo has only been in popular use since 1955, but where did it come from? Well, the clue we posted in the Confetti Official fan group said, this one's got soul, as in the capital of South Korea. That's right, Korea, everybody. That's the correct answer. And you know, once I start learning how to dance fight properly, I will start celebrating the answers to these questions with some dance moves. <gasps> That calls for a dance fight break. Yeah! <laughs> hey, yeah! Yeah! Whoa! Whoa! Hey, get out of here! Ow! 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 Oh, that was perfect. I didn't know I'd get into it so quickly, but I did it. All right, you know, that was fun and scary. Now, let's continue. We've got 13,217 players who are still in the game. And now we have a question about a musical genius. Ah, uh, looks like we're gonna uh, sit back and you know ask you about music, <laughs> musical geniuses that is. And here is question number six: Which singer was once Kelly Clarkson's mother-in-law, Dolly Parton, Trisha Yearwood, or Reba McIntyre? Now, of all of Kelly Clarkson's achievements. Her most memorable might be when Steve Carell screamed her name during the chest waxing scene in 40 Year Old Virgin, right? I mean, honestly, if someone screams J.D. Witherspoon randomly in a huge movie, it will be the first thing I put on my reel. Honestly, seriously, I would definitely do that. Now, Kelly married Brandon Blackstock in 2013. Does that answer the question for you? Okay, well, uh, probably for very few of you. Look. Brandon's dad, Narvel, was married and, excuse me, married to and managed the career of country, le excuse me, a country legend. JD, come on! All right, a country legend until they divorced in 2015. So, from 2013 to 2015, Kelly's mom in law was Narvel's wife. Reba McIntyre. Reba McIntyre. Reba, Reba McIntyre, who is the correct answer. And a national treasure. She sure is, JD. And you can catch Reba in a few weeks at Harris Hoosier Park in Anderson, Indiana, doing something I only wish I could do sing. That's right. When this is the only inflection you're capable of, you can't even book a gig on a cruise ship. It's a dirty, rotten world. Back to you, JD. Sorry, okay, I, I thought he was going to bring some more fun to the game. I'm not sure what's happening. Hey, we've got 10,559 players though who are still playing for a piece of our 10 grand giveaway. So let's take a look at the next one, shall we? Question number seven. What do astronomers call it when a star evolves into a black hole without first going supernova? Massive fail, flame out, or wormhole. Whoa, wait a minute, what? That's, <laughs> what, what just happened? A minute ago, we were talking about Kelly Clarkson's mother-in-law, and then we went straight to the inner workings of a black hole. You know, I, I feel like we just went into a sprint right now without stretching first. You know, just a quick little, quick little stretch. I hope no one pulls a muscle on this question. That's all I gotta say. All right, so all three of these answer choices would be awesome alternate names for party foul, right? Well, okay, maybe not wormhole, which also doesn't work as the answer for this question. That's because at the end of its life, a massive star will usually explode in a bright supernova before collapsing into a black hole. But sometimes they skip the explosion and go straight to black hole stage. And that's called a massive fail. Massive fail, everyone. That's the correct answer. There it is. And I hope it's still cool to use the word massive fail in reference to viral videos where people get hit in the crotch. I mean, it'd be too hard to lose that for my vocabulary at this point. I'm just, I'm just keeping it, you know? <laughs> I love that. Oh, massive fail. All right, where? Whoa, we had a massive fail party foul just now. What happened? Ooh.
10,000 of you thought it was wormhole? What? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's okay. It's all right. Share those answers with your friends, your family, your loved ones, the ones that are still in the game who are playing for the glory. You can help them. Help them with your answers. And maybe a free life? Free life just saving? Let me know in the chat. All right, cool. 3,441 players are seven for seven and three questions away from big money. What's next? Oh, man. Ooh, it's time for some fun with mythology. Unless you get this wrong, then it's not fun at all. Let's the fun begin, huh? All right, here it is. Question number eight. Which figure in Greek mythology was a goddess? Anthea, Andromeda, or Atla At Atalanta? <laughs> Atalanta, these names are crazy. Look, have you ever heard of Hephaestus? Well, he was the Greek god that built all the dwellings for the other gods. Uh, supposedly, he was the only unattractive god, though, of the perfectly beautiful immortals. I'm sorry, Hephaestus. I'm so sorry. Now, in Greek mythology, Andromeda has an impressive resume. Supposedly, she was more than beautiful, excuse me, she was more beautiful than the nymph daughters of the sea god Nereus. But she wasn't a goddess, and we're looking for the goddess of flowers. Well, was that Anthea? Well, <laughs> it sure was. Yes, Anthea. Anthea is the correct answer, everybody. There you go. And Atalanta was a swift-footed huntress. You know, they probably called her Hot Atalanta. <laughs> How do you say Hot Atalanta? Hot Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta, you get it? Y'all got it? Come on now. And look at this. We've got 1,810 players who have made it down to our final two questions. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Question number nine. The Pulitzer Prize winning author of Present at the Creation was present at the creation of what? Paris Peace Accords, NATO, or Treaty of Versailles. Now, here's something I found really interesting. In 1870, Joseph Pulitzer shot a building contractor he had a dispute with. The penalty that he received for this, it was just a big fine. It was just a big fine. Wow. Okay, how bad were the people who were actually in prison back then if shooting people just cost you some money? I mean, that's it's kind of crazy, right? Now, present at the creation was written by one of America's foremost diplomats, Dean Acheson. And he served during several pre presidential, J.D., the words, presidential administrations. But which important event happened in his presence? Well, he died in 1971, so it's not the Paris Peace Accords, which marked the end of the Vietnam War in uh, 1973. The key date for this one is April 4th, 1949. And that's when the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was created and Atchison was on hand to sign the treaty. So, NATO, NATO, N-A-T-O, NATO, that's how you say it, I think, is the correct answer. And 902 of you have amazingly gotten every right question so far. And you've earned the right to answer one more question worth $10,000. Announcer guy, can you build some drama? I sure can, JD. There's just one question left. Some of you are about to experience the ultimate thrill of perfection and be rewarded with big bucks. And some of you are about to understand what failure feels like. You'll think, why do I even try? Will anything good ever happen to me? Is happiness real? Back to you, JD. Uh, you know what? Hey, you are really bad at this job as well. So let's just continue. Here we are. It's time for your final question. This question uses information from Oxford Music Online. Here we go. What actress was born in the same country as the best-selling female country artist of all time? Nicole Kidman, Rachel McAdams, or Emma Watson? Now, I hope you get this right and win tonight, but don't, don't pay attention to the, to the announcer guy, okay? Thousands of people lose this game every night and never lose a wink of sleep over it. I mean, especially the people who get out on question one. I mean, <laughs> they have zero cares in the world. They're just, you know, hanging. They're, they're, they're kicking it with me. They're in the chat. They're leaving funny comments about my clothing. They're here, and so are you. Let's keep it going. So, the first thing you need to know is that the best-selling female country artist of all time is Canada's Shania Twain. So who's the other Canadian? Well, Nicole Kidman is famously Australian, but 
She was born in Hawaii, so she's out. Even though Emma Watson was raised in Britain, she was born in France, not Canada, which means Rachel McAdams. Rachel McAdams is the correct answer. Yes. <laughs> Wait, the leader of Mean Girls is from Canada? Well, then she's a great actress because they are super nice people up north. Eh? All right, now, it's my favorite part of the game, the part where I keep the people who knew all the answers in suspense while they wait to see how much money they won. Okay, that's long enough. So, how many winners did we have tonight? Whoa, 279 of you have answered all 10 correctly, and you're taking home $35.85 a piece. Yeah, good job. Hey, thank you so much for playing Confetti. We had a great time, and I hope everyone who played tonight did too. Let's shout out some of these winners. We got.